Hello, N4HNH here. This will be the third video in my series about the Yaesu FTDX10. And uh, this one's, I'm going to keep a little bit short so because I want to focus on one subject. The uh, It's something called band stacking. And I think a lot of people I've encountered aren't aware of this feature in, in uh, Yaesu radios. Uh, called band stacking and this is to let me just say I haven't even assigned anything to memory channels yet uh, you'll find that uh, you know I, I do it I do use memory channels but you will find that the band stacking is is really quite convenient and uh, so I'm going to show you some band stacking here for the 40 meter band and you may just find that this is convenient enough you may ever, may never even explore uh, using the memories but I do encourage you to take advantage of the memories uh, let me get this uh, centered up a little better here with the camera. And uh, so let's look at band stacking. So what that is, on the, um, I'm using VFOA, and I'm on uh, the uh, 7.168. Well, let's say that I want to leave that there, but I want to I go temporarily work another station, but on the same band while leaving that where it is. There's a button here right to next to the VFO called band. I press it. I, I want to go 7 megahertz band, and it's going to bring me another uh, register, another VFO register, if you will, of a different frequency and even a different mode. So let's say I'm going to put this on. Um, I'll just put it up here on a frequency where there's often a net. We'll do that. So... Um, 7251 so we'll do that all right and I so I could leave this here all the time for the net now watch this I can even this sort of dovetails into my previous videos here I can even set things like uh, attenuation 12 DB IPO on okay now RF gain is a knob so it's not going to remember a knob setting Okay, but at least those two, and look, I've knocked my noise floor down. I can even say, you know, I always want to use the digital noise reduction on that frequency. All right, now I'm going to press the band button one more time here and hit, whoops, I missed it. Uh, let me do it. Uh, okay, 7 megahertz. And now I'm going to dial in a CW uh, frequency. So I'm going to hit this up here to change modes. CWU, upper side, lower side, CW. Now, there, the mode button is also over here to the right of the uh, VFO dial, if you look right there. But I just thought I would show you how to do it here. And so uh, let's... Uh, Let's go ahead, because I like, you know, for those of you who are used to touch screens, you can do it right here to set the mode. So I've got the mode now set for CW, and I'm going to uh, find some CW. Now, I'm going to uh, enable some filtering for the CW. Well, first of all, maybe we don't need all this gain. I'll, I'll do 12 dB of attenuation. I'll do 6 dB of attenuation and then IPO. So we're going to drop that noise floor down. And you hear that faint signal in there? This is a preview to CW, folks. Uh, I'm going to turn my, my width control up here. And it's already got a 500 hertz roofing filter selected. It did that automatically for us because, uh, well, it detected that we had switched over to CW mode. And now you hear a little bit of that ringing. That's, well, to be honest with you, that's a 700 hertz ring because the CW pitch is set for 700 hertz. I'm going to go in there and change that. And see, no, notice up here, the multi-knob is now going to control pitch. I'm going to lower it to 600. And see, now the multi-knob will stay on pitch until I change it again. Now, but that ringing is coming from the filter, the really tight filter. And you can see the skirt of it right there, that little peak, showing you how tight that filter is. 
I'm going to enable something called audio peak filter. And then lower my RF gain. Let's find another signal. I digress, okay, but I can't help but stop on a CW frequency and just show you that we can come back. Let me widen it out a little bit. See the little indicator here? When it's high, I need to turn the knob to the right. When it's low, I turn the knob to the left to get it in the center. And that'll let you know when you're on the frequency that that station uh, that well that you need to be on receiving that station in order to get them with a 600 hertz tone. See, here's another one. He's a little low. So um, this is helping me adjust my frequency so that I get a 600 hertz tone. Remember, the tone is generated by your radio. Uh, so um, now I'm going to lower my width again. It takes away that noise. Now this, this is without the audio peak filter. I want to wait and let him uh, come back. Okay, well, we'll see if he comes back. I'm going to go back through my band stacking. If I press the band button again, it's going to take me back to the original frequency I was on. Now, you see what I did that time. Rather than tapping it on the screen, I just tapped it and tapped it again. So, see, now we have three different frequencies, and including modes and even things like our attenuation settings, and it's remembering all that. So, per band, you can do that. It's called triple band stacking. So, there's my original 7168. Double tap band again. 7251, again, then that, that was also lower sideband with 12 dB of attenuation, IPO. And now I'll tap it one more time twice, and it's taking me to 70294. So again, that's called band stacking. It's a tremendous feature in these Yesu radios. The older radios might, would I have an older one that had double band stacking, but the newer radios, um, including the FTDX 5000, which is about 10 years, 11 years old now, uh, those have triple band stacking, and, and uh, they've carried that through to the newer radios as well. So, uh, giving you a little preview there, though, of the CW aspects of this radio. It's, it's, it's uh, quite a boss on CW, I will say. So, back, you can press band here and then tap the band you want to go to. Um but or you know watch if i tap it what's this and i don't touch a thing it'll time out and go automatically to the next frequency in the band stack see pressing it once but if you don't want to wait if you don't want to wait just tap and tap again tap and tap again so three of those per band in the radio is called band stacking all right that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I just feel like that's a really wonderful convenience that the radio has, and it seems to be overlooked by a lot of people that have uh, these modern radios from Yesu. So take advantage of that. Now, I will still encourage uh, you to set up some memory frequencies of your favorites per band. And, and let me just give you a hint on what I do. Uh, I do this in memory settings, but I also do it in band stacking. I always keep... A couple of sideband frequencies in there, usually one on the lower end of the band, one on the upper end of the band, and then I keep a CW frequency. Now, if you're not, if you don't do CW, then well, put in three of your favorite sideband frequencies. But I generally keep one CW frequency available, so I can immediately tap over, switch over to CW, and go look for a signal. When you're tight. See, I'm going to wide a little bit. When you're real tight, you may s skip over. Oh, there was one. So I'm going to watch this indicator until it's in the center. And now, tighten my filter width. So we're already 500 hertz tight 
with a crystal filter and now we're digitally tightening, tightening it even more down to 50 hertz. In other words, why listen to this? When you don't have to. Now, and then the audio peak filter... Look what that did. It just, it magnifies that particular frequency. And I've, I've got my side tone, we call it set for 600 hertz. It's going to try to push everything else that's not 600 hertz out of the way. Think of it as reaching down, grabbing that signal that's at 600 hertz and boosting it. Audio peak filter. So here's what it sounds like without it. Could you tell I turned it on? Okay, we'll get into contour in another video because contour can be used with either CW or uh, sideband. But uh, that'll do it for this video. I appreciate you watching. And uh, th again, this was video number three in the series on the FTDX10. Uh, we've got a long ways to go. I want to thank my Patreons for helping me keep the channel going. And uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. The purpose of my channel primarily is to uh, help learn uh, different operating techniques with the various radios out there. And a lot of this overlaps from radio to radio. So even if I show you something on a FTDX10, it will be applicable in many cases to an FTDX3000D. And in some cases, even to a Kenwood or an Icom. So if you like this kind of content and you want to help me keep doing it, um, you know, please consider becoming a Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And of course, if you like the video and if you will subscribe, that'll help the channel as well. And if you subscribe and click the bell, you'll be notified when I upload the next video in this series. Okay, with that, I want to thank you for watching. And uh, this is N4HNH saying 73 until next time.